This episode is brought to you by 180 Markets, where it is our goal to bring every individual, fund manager, family office, or any qualified investor access to Australian stock exchange capital raises. If you were ever interested in how to access ASX capital raises in a super simple way, 180 Markets is for you. The sign-up process is easy. You just upload your ID, proof of your investor status, and your, and your current brokerage account information. The settlement of shares goes right into your existing account, and you can access our very next capital raise. If you're interested in free, easy access to thousands of ASX capital raises, including placements, IPOs, reverse takeovers, and more, check out 180markets.com.au. Hello, investors. Welcome to another edition of 18 Minutes with 180 Markets. But today, it's a special edition because, as you know, friends and investors, we are always looking out for great opportunities. And we have found one today. Friends, it is so important to get on the trends, and early trends especially. And one of those big early trends is a change in energy, specifically uranium. The United States Senate has passed a bill establishing a strategic reserve. And obviously, it's already been reflected in some share prices, but we think there's a lot more to go. And with that, we found a fantastic investment, Alligator Energy. And we're going to hear to talk all about it and why us at 180 Markets think it's so fantastic. We will be investing. And we're here to talk with Greg Hall, Managing Director. Greg, welcome to 18 Minutes with 180 Markets. Thank you, Greg. Nice to talk to you. Hey, Greg. You know, one of the things that we like to invest in is people. And you have a true uranium background. Can you just share in a couple of minutes a little bit about your background for the audience? Sure, thanks. Uh, look, I'm a mining engineer by background. I started my uh, early career in a variety of ways, but I was mining manager at the Olympic Dam project right through its conceptual and feasibility planning and uh, in the first production and first expansions. Uh, right through the 80s and early 90s, and, and that was, uh, um, it was obviously a copper and uranium mine. I moved into nickel uh, and, uh, and other commodities for a while, including overseas. Came back as operations manager for Ranger Uranium Mine at the time when um, uh, North Limited or ERA was looking at Jabaluka as well as uh, Ranger. Spent some time there while we ramped up the second pit and the operations there. And then I moved into uranium nuclear fuel marketing with Rio Tinto. So I was the agent for Rio Tinto in North America and parts of Europe for uranium sales and did that for a good period of four years. So I had long, a strong exposure to the, to the nuclear industry, visiting many reactors, enrichment plants and conversion plants and doing a lot of long-term contracting. Um, post that period, I spent some time in marketing for Bauxite Lumina and moved back into uranium when we kicked off Toro Energy Limited out of Adelaide, which is where I'm now resident. So I was a founding MD there. We, we acquired assets and grew and achieved um, West Australia's first fully approved uranium mine at Luna. Uh, just around the same time, there was a big tsunami in Japan, which uh, put paid to the nuclear industry for a period of years. And now we're seeing a, a real turnaround. We're seeing the, the excess stocks from that time now being, uh, being essentially gone from the market. And you see definitely a, an interest return and, and a lot of other things happening in the market at the current time. So we've, I've, I came into Alligator as an non-exec director about five years ago. I've taken over as CEO about um, two and a half years ago and we've started to, to broaden the company out. Absolutely. But I think the key message is you have some serious uranium background. And even though we've just had this huge event this huge legislation, I should say, in the last couple of weeks, the reality is you've known this market for 25 years plus. So we're really getting that experience and that step change event at the same time. Um, can you just talk to the audience a little bit about uranium, maybe from like a supply demand perspective on a global basis? Yeah, certainly. So look, you, you mentioned the, the change that occurred two weeks ago on the 4th of December, in fact, when the UN Senate passed that bill to allow a strategic uranium reserve to be purchased. Now, the reason that's very important is because it's sort of like a culmination of, of three years of uh, uncertainty in the US market, starting with um, petitions by US producers to try to insist on purchase of the US uranium, uh, nuclear fuels working group under the Trump administration looking at how they could support the industry and culminating now with this strategic 
strategic reserve, plus some other things in the enrichment market, which will help support the US industry. The upshoot is it's going to, uh, they'll purchase something like about 3 million pound of uranium into a reserve and take that out of the market. So it basically is like having a, another key demand point. And uh, not only that, but to be effective, they'll have to buy that uranium at quite a good price. And uh, we put in our release this morning, we anticipate that's in the 45 to $50 per pound mark, US dollar. And that's certainly going to make an impact on the, uh, the long-term price. So that's the most recent events. But what we've seen since the Japanese tsunami is um, excess stocks coming onto the market while um, especially Japanese reactors were shut down, some European ones were shut down. And that meant there were excess stocks of uranium available. But not only that, in the last five years, we've, there's been continuing build of new nuclear. The last five years has seen a 15% increase in nuclear power around the world. And now you're seeing a ramp up of the new technologies. So generation three plus and generation four large reactors, which have full passive safety, are now being looked at for the future builds, along with the small modular reactors, which are basically building factories, put on site, and then joined together to, to create power. The first one of those is going through full approval in the United States as we speak, and is planned to be commercialized by about 2025. So, Post that Japanese tsunami, when there was a dip in the industry and dip in the market, you're now seeing a much bigger supply uh, demand curve. What you've seen is a drop in supply because of the current spot prices of even around $30 a pound, you can't get new mine development underway. It requires higher than $40 a pound to get restarts to occur or new mine development to occur. I, absolutely. And I think that, you know, in summation, the supply demand dynamic as in any market uh, is very favorable for uranium. And if you're in a very favorable market, uh, you're going to make money. Um, that's, I, I would say, as a summation. And then maybe let's getting into alligator specifically. Um, the two main projects, I suppose, you know, in the Northern Territory and your recent acquisition, I think just completed in October down, down more by you in, in South Australia. Uh, can you just discuss them, please? Yeah, look, the, the Arnhem Land uranium is, is really where Alligator started. We've got a long series of work there, doing a lot of detail with the depth underneath the, the barren surface rocks. Because Arnhem Land is where you go for the highest grade, largest uranium deposits in Australia. Ranger, Jabaluka, Narvalik, and some of the other deposits there were all high grade and uh, very extensive, some of them. So it's almost uh, um, uh, an option on an elephant country there. So, but it's expensive exploration. It's ex exploration you need to do at more of the peak of the market when you've got good funds and you can take the risk of doing that detailed work at depth. But we are continuing work there. We've got new tenements opened up now. We've got a long relationship with traditional owners. We've employed uh, upwards of 35 um, traditional owner representatives in our, mine, in our develop, development work and uh, our exploration work. And, and so we have a, a long-term view there, which we want to keep working. There's about a six month window of the wet season of working there. So it is uh, an awkward time there. So we, we decided to expand out into South Australia in two key areas. The first was around the Cooper Basin oil and gas fields, and that's because the biggest in situ recovery uranium fields are all associated with oil and gas in the world. That's in Kazakhstan, in Texas, in Wyoming, all of them. And that's because you get a relationship between the gas leakage or, or hydrocarbons, which is a reductant to, to solutions of uranium in the upper surface sediments. And that's what uh, those, those areas can produce. So we're going to explore in the Cooper Basin. It's a brand new area. It's got evidence of uranium with some intersections already, and we're going to take that forward. But our other acquisition this year was the Samphire Uranium Project, a 47 million pound deposit just south of Wyala in South Australia. Uh, two deposits, Blackbush and Plumbush. The Blackbush one we focused on first, and we've just completed an early desktop conceptual study, which, which brings us up to the status up to where it is now. And the great point of that is it's the black bush deposits got a high grade core. And in fact, we published some of the results there, which is fantastic. We know that's expandable. We, we know we can expand the bulk tonnage as well. And there was early leach tests done, which are very positive in terms of leaching uranium. Um, and because in the saline environment, the most recent technical breakthroughs in resin extraction of uranium have shown that in, uh, in, in um, chloride waters, they now work quite well. 
that's been done at the honeymoon project and also at other projects around the world. So we now pull together that to say, yes, this is now a viable project. We, we can't publish the, the detailed cost results because it's still an inferred resource. But what we know from that and what we published today is here's the steps we need to do going forward to upgrade the resource, do further test work to get the most modern, recent advances in resin technology to be applied, pull all that together in, uh, in, a, in a scoping study leading to free feasibility, and then publish those results. And that's what the work we want to try and do this coming year. Yeah, and Greg, I think that just backing up one second, you know, one of the key differentiators with alligator is in your case, especially in situ mining for you, this is nothing new. Can you just talk a little bit about your experience and your history in, in this particular segment? Well, it, I, ISR mining, uh, ISR um, uh, exploration is is relatively new to alligator energy, but not new to our our key advisors and consultants. So South Australia is the hub of is, in situ recovery technology. It's one of the reasons why I said to our board we should come down here. There has been so many people who work at the Beverly Uranium Mine with Heathgate, at the Honeymoon Mine, and work on other prospects here, that there's consultants and advisors readily available based in South Australia that know ISR Uranium Mining inside out. So we've uh, combined with a, a few of those key people to help us look at this project and take it forward. Um, we've got available expertise on the geological side, on the processing side, on the world field technology side, on the uranium production side, on the approval side, and on the environmental management side. So all of that area is well covered in South Australian expertise and Alligator, we have now have access to that. Um, we also, uh, apart from having access to those skilled people here, as we've said in all our quarterlies, we are looking for uranium opportunities elsewhere. We're continuously looking and evaluating them. We have some key people overseas that we utilise to help look at them. And so we, we're not going to rest in our laurels. We're going to take Samfire forward. We think that's a developable project at the right price. But we certainly will also look at, uh, with our team's experience, and other opportunities. Yeah, and I'm saying that, you know, in all of your experience, you know, whether it's been with, you know, ERA, RIA, Ranger, you certainly have a global reach in the commodity. Is that accurate? Well, yeah. The, Uranium, look, when you've got the top 10 mines producing 85% of the world's uranium, you tend to know everyone in the game. So, um, you know the deposits. We've, we've got some excellent geological advisors who have looked at pretty well every deposit around the world. So, they know the deposits. They know where we can potentially target and, where, and, and what we might be able to achieve. Um, we know when something's a bit overpriced and we know when it's the right time to buy and the right time to walk. But certainly... Um, it is a global business. Once you're in uranium mining, you're marketing and selling overseas because we don't yet have an industry in Australia. But, but you are involved in that global business. So we, we have links into to global, both advisors, consultants, and marketing groups that, that we use as well. Uh, absolutely. Hey, Greg, you know, we're obviously winding down the, the 2020. In your mind, what would a, a successful 2021 look like in your mind? Well, do you mean in general or to alligator? <laughs> to alligator. <laughs> to alligator, okay. Because there's if you a lot can cure of COVID, that's all we need also. That's but... <laughs> okay. Now look, to, to alligator, this, this is what we see as a success. Um, first with Samfire, um, we want to, to uh, put some good some funds into the ground to improve that resource, extend that resource, lift the grade, but importantly, upgrade the category from inferred into indicated as significantly as possible so that we've then got a genuine project we can take forward. We want to complete the test work on, the, uh, on fresh cores so that we know the recoverable outcomes and take that forward. We've got a lot of um, community and environmental engagement work which we've commenced. We want to keep that going, but also commence the baseline work and early detail work with the South Australian government on approval process. So if we achieve all that, we have an outcome for a, uh, an updated study, an updated resource, and we're on a path for potential approval at the right price, then that's a great outcome for Samfire. Secondly, we want to put in some core geophysics work into Arnhem Land with this new Narvalek North tenement package that we've got out there. There's some very high grade intersections of up to 6% uranium in small areas around that tenement package, and we want to explore them, and that's going to take some geophysics work. So we want to complete that work next year on the ground up there, ready for future targeting. We've got a series of targets already. We want to perfect them. 
And the third key one for us will be the big lake uranium. We've really got to do some base level geophysics over that to look at the channels, the potential channels that could hold uranium in that area, similar channels and similar formations to uh, Beverly and Honeymoon, and let's see what they can contain. So while it's greenfield area, we know there's uranium present from historical work. Let's see whether it's accumulated to become economic. Apart from that uranium story, we have um, the nickel cobalt in Northern Italy, which was, uh, which was an opportunistic game that we uh, picked up about two years ago. Now, this is an interesting story. It's set up as a separate company. And we've gone out after initial work and getting drilling permits in place and doing work on the ground. We now have uh, some significant groups interested in coming in as partners into that. We're still in the discussion stage, but we would like to be able to take that forward. Now, that sort of um, deposit, nickel, cobalt, within Europe, it's starting to gain a lot of traction within the European, European battery minerals market. So, so we see that as a, as a good adjunct to our business, and we'll see where that can take us. Yeah, I, absolutely. And I, I suppose that, you know, just on the nickel, cobalt, and, you know, maybe we should have mentioned it earlier, the way that we're looking at it is it's upside optionality on alligator. It's something that you're almost getting at these share prices for free, uh, the, the way that we see it essentially. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, then obviously, uh, as you discussed earlier on, uh, we know that we're in the right space and sector right now. Uh, we're completing or we're gonna do a capital raising right now. Uh, how is good a balance sheet in your opinion? How do, we, how do you see it going forward? All right, so we've, we've got, um, cash-wise, we had it the, uh, in October around 1.2 million. Uh, we've kept ourselves very tight. Look, our, our burn rate for um, um, holding our assets and, and maintaining our core staff and advisors is only around 60 grand a month. We've kept that pretty tight. Once we start working on the ground, that's different. So we have uh, existing cash earmark, uh, was earmarked for a couple of key aspects, but these new funds will allow us to take Sandfire forward in a much faster manner. So that's what's important. So once we once we bring that in and we've got uh, allowing for some drop in funds by the end of this year, we, we might have around 2.3 million. That will allow us to do a significant program on Samfire. Um, we've used the funds up towards 900,000 to, to a million in total there. And then also um, undertake these key initial programs on the other tenants. Yeah, absolutely. And I also think it's, you know, establishing, you know, you've had a, a very supportive shareholder base, but, you know, bringing in even more supportive shareholders, um, th that's how I would see it as well. Yeah. Well, we've actually been very pleased with that. We, we brought in uh, some new shareholders from Samfire, uh, the unlisted but public Samfire company today, uh, this year. We've got some significant new shareholders in that. They're very interested in uranium going forward. We've had uh, long-serving shareholders in the McCullum Group out of Perth, uh, which Peter McIntyre's involved, one of our uh, board members who's, uh, who was uh, with Extract. And so they've been long-term shareholders. And we've had other key shareholders come into our group, which we're happy to take forward. Um, and these guys really have a good medium solid view on uranium and the opportunity it's going to present. And that's, that's what we have a view of. And we're certainly going to satisfy that intent. Yeah, absolutely, Greg. And again, you know, in closing, you know, we think that the thematic is correct. We think the specificity with Alligator is correct. And obviously we're backing you. Greg, any closing thoughts for the audience? Well, look, we, we do believe that the uranium story is, is ripe. And as you've seen over the last one or two years, every time there's a bit of news, you get a little peak up in price and things move. This is just an indicator of how tight the supply demand is. There's 120 million pounds currently being produced in uranium every year. There's 180 million pounds being used in reactors every year. And that deficit, has been there at some level for the last four to five years. So you can't last like that. Ultimately, as you've got ongoing demand, you're going to see a pickup in the price needed to regenerate the uranium from existing operations and from new operations. And especially there's some operations closing down. So it's time for a rejuvenation of the industry and we want Alligator to be part of that. Absolutely, and we look forward to sharing that ride with you. Greg, thank you very much for your time. All right, thanks very much, Greg, all the best. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching another presentation by 180 Markets. Don't forget, if you want access to thousands of ASX capital raises, head on over to 180markets.com.au, sign up, and get on board for our very next capital raise. Thanks for watching.